Hi YouTube, this is Sunshine. This will be your first lesson in Wicca, Witchcraft, and Pagan Practices. I'm going to start off the video by telling you that I will be using a book to guide us along. It is called The Complete Idiot's Guide to Wicca and Witchcraft. Um, it's the third edition of the book. It's by Denise Zimmerman and Katherine A. Gleason. Um, this is what the book looks like. It is a great book. Um, it's very comprehensible for people who are just beginning. Uh, it has anywhere from pictures to definitions that are important. So it's very good. We're going to start off with chapter one. Chapter one is titled All About Wicca and Witchcraft. And um, it's basically a myth-busting chapter to clear up some of you know, the misconceptions about the religion. I'm going to start off with telling you what Wicca actually means. Um, Wicca is the religion that many witches practice. Uh, it is an earth-based religion. We put a lot of emphasis on the earth, how you treat the earth, um, the natural cycles of the moon and the sun. Um, we usually worship a god and a goddess. Um, some, you know, people choose to just worship the goddess, others just the god. Um, it is a religion where you can tweak it to, you know, fit you. We try not to make anything uncomfortable for anyone. We don't step on any toes. If you're not comfortable with it, no one asks you to do it. And if they do, then you're not practicing with the right people. It's a religion designed to be comfortable for you. Witchcraft, Wicca, is a constitutionally protected religion in the United States. It's been so since 1986, and it will hopefully always be that way. Um, note that you can use the word wick, uh, Wicca and the word witch interchangeably. Um, Wicca and witch, Wicca witch, either one. Um, I'm also going to say that um, it is one of the most benign religions I've ever studied. I, I have an interest in all kinds of different theologies and this one's caught my eye the most because of how extremely benign it is. You really care about everyone around you, including yourself and the earth. Um, so it's really not the devil-worshipping cult that the media, as in movies, makes you think it is because we don't even believe in Satan, so we wouldn't be able to worship him. Um, Supernatural abilities. We are not the witches of Charmed. We do not make things fly across the room at will. However, we do believe in magic. Magic is spelt M-A-G-I-C-K. The magic that's spelt with the C is il illusional magic, like pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Um, magic with a K is using the force of the earth to make change or to manipulate your own life. Note that it is not good to manipulate others' lives. Um, we do strongly believe in, three will, uh, in free will, and um, if you impinge on others' free will, then you have a karmic backlash. But the thing about our karma is that it comes back to us three times worse um, so while we do have the ability to make change in the universe, it is also something that we do once everything mundane is exhausted. Um, w a Wiccan challenge for living in today's world. It is a challenge. It is a challenge if you are in a region or a city that is not prone to having witches or pagans or is ignorant of what it is, you can get stares. 
you can have snickers and comments and rumors. Luckily, everyone around me knows what I practice and what I do, so it's not as bad as what it started out, but it is something that you will have to be proud to bear and you'll have to deal with on a daily basis explaining to people what it really is. Um, it's worth it though, it's so worth it. Um, note that anyone can be a witch and also note that I'm just going section by section in the book so it can be a little sporadic at times. Now, there is, or was, a Council of American Witches who in the 1970s made a set of, not rules, but basic guidelines in which witches believe. Now, I could sit here and read you all of them, or I can read you my revised version. So, I'm going to go ahead and get my notebook and do that. The 13 goals of a witch um, is basically a guideline for the way that we are expected to live and the way we're expected to treat others and ourselves. I will go ahead and read all of these um, and then go and read mine. Um, the first one, we practice rights to attune ourselves with the natural rhythm and life forces. This meaning that um, we observe nature, we observe earth, we keep it holy, um, and we try to observe it to make ourselves holy. Um, we recognize our intelligence gives us unique responsibility. This is true. Um, <laughs> just like Spider-Man, with power comes responsibility, and that's not exempt from us. Um, we acknowledge the depth of our power is greater than the apparent average person. That's a given. We conceive that the creative power in the universe, both masculine and feminine, we value either gender, none above other. Um, there are covens and denominations of witchcraft who um, are choosy with which deity they worship. Some of them only worship the god, others just the goddess, some of them both. Um, personally, I observe them both. I think you can't have one without the other, but to each their own. We recognize both outer worlds and inner psychological worlds. Um, basically, this is saying that we recognize the spirit world is real. We do not recognize any authoritarian hierarchy. A lot of times in covens, you will have a high priest or priestess, but they do not have total control. We try to keep it almost to a democratic standpoint. Um, now, some covens um, will have a high priest or priestess until they die. And, you know basically it gets to the point where if you don't like it, find a new coven. Um, we see religion, magic, and wisdom in living as being united in the way one views the world as and lives in it. Um, the next one is calling oneself a witch does not make you a witch, but neither does hereditariness itself. Um, basically, it's like calling yourself a Democrat doesn't make you a Democrat, or calling yourself a princess doesn't make you a princess. Um, witchcraft comes with work and study, and even though you might be born into a family of witches doesn't make you a witch. You have to dedicate yourself in the eyes of the goddess and god, so you have to put in the legwork. We acknowledge that... It is the affirmation and the fulfillment of life. 
in a continuum of evolution and development of consciousness that gives meaning to the universe we know and to our personal role in it. This big paragraph is basically saying that things are going to change and we try to keep up with it. This next one um, has started a lot of things in the witchcraft community and the communities outside of it. And I imagine I'm going to get a little bit of flack for this one. Our only animosity towards Christianity or any major stream religion is that they have claimed to be the one true right and only way. This goes against everything in witchcraft, every belief we have. Um, if you hear a witch ever say, this is the only way, then they're not a witch. We believe that whatever is comfortable for you is the right way for you, and no one should tell you otherwise. What you believe in and what you feel comfortable in should be what you can happily believe in and be comfortable in. Um, next one is, we are not threatened by any debates on the history of the craft. The craft is a peaceful thing. It has always been a peaceful thing. It will always be a peaceful thing. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. We do not accept the concept of absolute evil, nor do we worship any entity known as Satan or the devil as defined by Christian traditions. We don't even believe in them, guys. Um, we work with nature for that which contributes to our health and well-being. Basically, we wouldn't be here if we didn't have nature. Nature rocks. Okay. Um, these next few laws are my laws that are closely revised um, by the laws that Scott Cunningham has made. Scott Cunningham, now deceased, uh, deceased, God has blessed his soul. He died very young and had written, I think it was over 50 books. And he died when he was in his late 30s, so that's really amazing. Um, he was one of the very first American witches, and he is truly an inspiration to me, and that, you know, led me to revise some of his things. One, the high priestess shall be all your mother, sister, and friend. You shall obey her commands within the circle, for she is the embodiment of the goddess, the lady incarnate. She is to be respected. This meaning that the high priestess is going to run it her way. Listen to her in the circle. She is the embodiment of the goddess. If you don't like it, find a new coven. Two, the high priest shall be all your father, brother, and friend. You shall obey his commands within the circle, for he is the embodiment of the god, the Lord incarnate. He is to be respected. Same thing as the high priestess. Whenever he's in circle, he's taking on the embodiment of the god. Three, both the high priest and priestess shall appoint a maiden or page so that their duties might be learned. This way the craft shall not die. Right now the craft is getting big. It's getting popular. Um, whenever we had the King James Act, acts <laughs> that repeal witchcraft, um, it almost straight out died. Um, Roman soldiers would go and kill druids or basically any priests of different religions. So um, some religions were wiped off the earth, but the craft lived. Five, keep in memory those who went before us for their suffering paved our path. Salem Witchcraft Trials of 1692. The only the only witches that were there was, you know, by chance, um, Rebecca Nurse and Bridget Bishop, but, oh, maybe Sarah Good, but the rest of the, all of these people who were hung and burnt, and poor Giles Corey who was pressed to death, none of these people were witches. They were innocent people who were trying to live their lives without the, uh, crazed enragement of Abigail Williams. Um... And we remember that. We remember that 
these people died. Or even actual witches back in Europe, they died so that we can have this, so that we can live freely and be able to have this and be able to make YouTube videos teaching people about this. Um, six, you shall observe the Sabbaths, feast and make merry of the celebration of the turning of the year. A Sabbath is a sun festival. Your Sabbaths are basically your equinoxes, your solstices, and then the cross quarters with them. There are eight Sabbaths. Um, they are on the wheel of the year. They have Yule, um, Ostara, Samhain. Those are just a few to give a few examples. Also, keep in mind the Esbats, for it is the time when the moon is most prominent. Esbats are basically um, your moon holidays. Some people practice on the moon moon. I personally like to practice on the full moon, which is a custom. Eight, keep in mind the threefold law that is influenced by all actions. The threefold law is what you put out there will come back to you three times worse. So we watch out for that because it can really get us. Nine, seek wisdom in books, but also in herbs, stones, and all things wild and natural. You will learn best in this religion with experience. Yes, it's good to have your basics, but as far as teaching others go, experience is best to none. 10. All shall be properly admitted before tending ritual. Thus, all clans shall be kept from those who wrong us. Don't bring a crazy person to your rituals. Don't bring a stranger to your rituals because they can turn out to be a crazy person. Keep it in secret all of your covenstead. Reveal not the names of your brothers and sisters as to avoid persecution. Think of it like a waiver to have your picture being put on the internet. You're not going to just go post things about other people. What if you're practicing with someone and they don't want to have it public? You know, have it public. So keep hush the names of your covenstead as so they don't face the persecution if they're not ready for it. 12. Write and memorize one's own rites rituals to keep from untrusting eyes, lest you burn the book to ashes. I'm sure everyone on this green earth has heard of a book of shadows. Our book of shadows is a lot of things to us. It's our dream journal, our actual journal, um, things to record rites, things to record spells, you try to keep it memorized as best as you can in case you have to get rid of it. Um, and this applied more to whenever witchcraft was an offense punishable by death. But also, if you're not ready to be out there with your witchcraft, it's more important to memorize these things. 13. Consecrate all tools before use. Consecrate basically means to purify them. And this is to leave them of all negative energies or anything that could jeopardize your magic. 14. None but those of the Wicca shall see our tools and hear our rites. Um, if they have no general interest in witchcraft, it's best just not to reveal the intimate details. Um, of course, you know, you want to be a mythbuster and you want to tell them the truth about it, but it doesn't mean you have to tell them where you practice or how you practice. 15. Don't worry, we're almost done. Teach those who come to you if they are worthy. Um, my students had to have a trial of three months before I agreed to teach them anything serious because I wanted to make sure that they were good people and that they really wanted to learn. 7, 16. <laughs> Any of the Wicca that knowingly brings enemies into our midst shall be banished. Basically think of it like a friendship. Your coven is your family and your friends. You wouldn't bring someone into your home that you knew was going to hurt their feelings or even jeopardize their life. So don't do it or they could banish you. See. 
17. Honor all living things, for we are made by the Lord and the Lady. The Lord and the Lady make the living things. We're going to respect them as to respect the Lord and Lady. 18. Mind the Wiccan Reed with an open heart. Um, a couple lessons from now, we will get to the Wiccan Reed, which is um, basically a document telling the guidelines of our religion. And it's kind of like the Bible in essence that if you have a question, the answer should be there. 19. Shine the blessing of the God and Goddess on all. Even if someone is persecuting you for things that they really don't know about, instead of getting mad and huffing and puffing, it's just easier to smile and let them know that it's okay for not understanding. Okay, let me see. So we went over all that. Alright. The least you need to know. This is a very handy little section in the back of every chapter, and this is how I will always close the lesson. Wicca is recognized and legitimate religion with hundreds of thousands of people, women and men, practicing Wicca in the United States today. Note, which is what we call men and women, men and women. We do not say warlock, we do not say magician, we do not say wizard. It is witch. Witches do not believe, wait, witches do believe in the pure energy of the all, the union of the masculine and feminine energy. We don't believe in the Christian concept of Satan. Um, it doesn't really mention the all in this chapter. But in, I think it's two more chapters, we will go through a whole discussion about it. Witches are everywhere. You probably know at least one witch. Honestly, YouTube viewer, you probably do. A lot of them are still in the broom closet and are afraid to come out. But come out, come out, wherever you are, little witches. Witches are not inherently good or bad, just like any other human beings on Earth must choose how they will use their powers for the benefit of themselves and others. This is like knowledge. Knowing something doesn't make knowing and knowledge good or bad. It's what you do with it. Um, this is magic. Magic is the raw force of the universe. It is not good or evil. It is all about intention. You decide whether it's good or evil. According to the Wiccan concept of karma, whatever you do, good or bad, comes back to you threefold. If you remember nothing else, remember the basic tenet of the Wiccan read. Harm none and do what you will. And I will leave you on this about the Wiccan read. That is the last eight words of it and it harm none, do what you will. This is saying we can do whatever we want as long as it doesn't hurt anything. And that catches us up because it can't hurt anyone or anything by default even. So for all those people who think that witchcraft is a very loose religion and we get away with whatever, we really don't. So I'm glad that you watched your first lesson and that we were able to bust a few myths for you. So maybe now you can start to see how benign this religion really is. I'll see you later for your chapter two, which is the history of Wicca and witchcraft. Blessed be.